Intermediate Accounting 26 Statement of Cash Flows Indirect Method for Cash Flow from Operations. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email and our phone number. We're on Facebook at St. Louis Test Prep. And for some introductory comments on Statement of Cash Flows, you can find them in our Intermediate Accounting 1 and 2 videos. I'm going to jump over to an assignment that I recently did for a student. And you'll notice here that we have an income statement for five years worth of time, and we have a balance sheet for five years. What the student was asked to do was to create a statement of cash flows for 02 through 05. And I thought this is a good example of not only doing uh, the indirect method of statement of cash flows, but also showing you how you can roll it forward year to year to year. So let's talk about the steps we would use to complete statement of cash flows with the indirect method. You'll notice in first in format that we have in brown cash flow from operations, blue cash flow from investing, and light green cash flow from financing. So there's a few steps that we take to do the chart. And before I get to that, let me mention some footnotes. We have increase or decrease in cash in red, which is the first thing I'm going to deal with here in just a minute. I have a check figure that I'll show you that makes sure that the totals we come up with agree to the increase or decrease in cash. You'll notice that the financials have short-term debt and long-term debt. And I have a footnote, number one here, for cash flow from financing. Cash flow from financing, which is how you raise money to run your business and pay it off, deals only with the long-term debt. The short-term debt is going to be in the cash flow from operations section because it's a current liability. You'll also note on this sort of abbreviated balance sheet, property, plant, and equipment is shown net, meaning that it is net of accumulated depreciation. So depreciation expense is buried here, it's not broken out in this presentation. So we just net it against the fixed assets. So fixed assets minus depreciation equals property, plant, and equipment net. So you're not going to see depreciation in the cash flow statement from operations. It's buried, if you will, in the investing section. That's what I have on the footnote. Per the instructions, what the instructor told the students to do. Total property, plant, and equipment less depreciation was included in the investing section in the section in the line item PPE net. So let's talk about steps to complete this cash flow statement. The first thing I would do would be to calculate the change in cash for each period. And let's see how that ties in. So if I look at 2002 and I click on this cell, actually my check figure right here, you'll see that the O2 change in cash is the O2 in blue minus the O1 cash balance. So O2 minus O1 cash is the change in cash for O2, which is 45. Step two is post net income in the operating operations section. And I'm saving as I go. If I go up to the income statement, I see earnings and in parentheses NI, which means net income. So if we're using O2, and I go to statement of operations and I look at the net income section, I'll see that that is linked. To the, to the earnings, which is net income in this case. Number three, I always say deal with investing and financing changes in cash first. And what is left equals operating cash. So if you can imagine going through your checkbook and you're looking to categorize transactions, sources, and uses of cash. 
deal with investing and financing first. Whoops. Deal with investing and financing first. And whatever is left over, I don't need this spreadsheet. And whatever's left over is operating. So here's what I did. Let's go up to the investing section. An increase in property and plant would be a use of cash. A decrease would be selling items, selling them off, which would be an increase. <clears throat> which would be more cash. So the buy more assets, buy more assets uses cash. That's why the bear with me. Buy more assets use cash. That's why an increase in property and plan is a negative. Sell assets increase in cash. That's why the decrease is a positive. So in this case, if we look at the link sell, we'll see that we increase property, plant, and equipment. I put a negative around the parentheses, so we end up with a use of cash of $72. The same is true of other fixed assets. If fixed assets increase, we've used cash, it's negative. If we've sold assets, that's an increase in cash, that's why the decrease is a positive. If I look at the link, I see that fixed assets went from 32 to 39, that's an increase, which is why we're subtracting $7. So I get that subtotal of $79 as an outflow or use. That's cash flow from investing. Let's do financing. Remember, financing is raising funds to run your business and paying them off. And this section deals with the long-term debt. If you borrow money, that's a positive, that's an increase in cash. If your debt goes down, that means you're paying off, which is a decrease in cash. That's why decrease is in parentheses here. If I click on the link sell, I see that long-term debt went down from 55 to 50. That's a decrease in cash because I paid off debt to negative 5. And finally, dividends are always in the financing section. If I click on the sell, we paid $18 in dividends if I'm just looking at millions. So I've got a negative 18 for dividends. My cash flow for, from financing is a total of minus 23. Now when we get to the operating section, what we need to do is consider current asset and current liability changes current asset and current liability changes. For example, we start with net income at the top of the indirect method for operations. We start with net income at the top and we reconcile down to cash. And what happens in between here are adjustments to reconcile net income at the top to cash flow at the bottom. And specifically how we do that is we have our current asset changes and we have our current liability changes. The current asset changes operate in the opposite way within this reconciliation. So for example, if accounts receivable went up, that means you've sold more stuff. Let's look at each example. If I click on the accounts receivable link, I'll see the receivables went up. They went from 219 to 283 in 2002. If receivables went up, that means I sold more stuff, which means revenue. So I'm going to decrease it to back out the revenue that relates to receivables. Let's look at inventory. Inventory went up 282 to 348. If inventory went up, that's a negative, that's a decrease of 66. Let's click on this still again. I want to make sure I'm in the right place. Here we go. 282 to 348. Other current assets. Let's click on that. Other current assets went up. That impact gets subtracted out. 
Now let's look at the current liability side. So what we just dealt with was accounts receivable inventory and current assets. In each case, if I look back up here, accounts receivable inventory and current assets all increased. All of those items got decreased to remove the impact to net income. Let's look at current liabilities and click on accounts payable. Accounts payable went up. In this case, we add the impact. Accrued expenses went up. We add the impact. Short-term debt went down. We subtract the impact. So you can see that the treatment of a current assets is the opposite of the increase or the decrease in the account. Current liabilities, it's the same as the increase or the decrease in the account. Accounts payable went up. We add it. Current accrued expenses went up. We add it. Short-term debt went down. We subtract it. So I have a subtotal for all the activity from net income all the way down to the cash. Now, the next, the last step really is to take all three subtotals: the 57 minus 170, minus 79, and minus 23, and come up with an increase or a decrease in cash, the summation is 40 minus 45, which agrees to the change in the cash balance that I have up here at the top of the page. The reason I suggested doing things in this order is we do the easiest stuff first. We know the change in cash, we can post the net income. Investing and financing activities are easier to find, and we do the operations, which is the hardest section last. And then our goal is to make sure that the changes in all the accounts reconcile to the change in cash at the bottom of the page. And I did that for all four years. That's as far as we're going to get on Intermediate Accounting 27. Continuous Classroom are our weekly live chats on current accounting topics that we have in small groups from gotomeeting.com. YouTube channels, Ken Boyd, STL, all one word. You'll find a complete list of videos on the website. For one-on-one -on -one live tutoring and chat sessions, stltest.net is our website. Here's our email address and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.